On today's show, some names being rumored with the LA Clippers early on in this offseason. Going to be talking about what or who those names are and what kind of value they would bring to the Clippers. Do they sound like a good idea? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Cancun Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Vaziri, born and raised in L.A. Just finished my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more NBA content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcast including youtube or want you to let me know what you think of the names that i am about to say are rumored so far in this early off season with the clippers and before we get into that this episode is brought to you by prize picks prize picks is the best daily fantasy sports platform in north america all you got to do is download the app today and use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars all right so the clippers the off season is still you know, young, and I mean, it hasn't really started. The NBA Finals have not ended yet. So, nonetheless, though, by the way, Dallas has made it to the Finals. So, the team that the Clippers lost to in the conference, in the Western Conference playoffs, has made it to the Finals. Does that change anything about the Clippers' approach next season? Maybe that's an episode in itself. Does Do the Dallas Mavericks making the Finals change the offseason approach for the Clippers? I mean, I don't know. If anything, I think it just reconfirms what they believe, and that is that we got to run it back, and as long as we have Kawhi Leonard healthy, we are going to have a good chance of winning the West and going all the way. Now, I'm going to talk about some names that have recently surfaced on Twitter linked with the Clippers. DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, and Chris Paul. Now, I know what you're wondering. What did you just say? Yes. So let's talk about the first one and the best one of those, and that is DeMar DeRozan. Now, Mike A. Scotto, senior NBA insider of Hoops at Hoops Hype, he had a report that said the Clippers may be a potential suitor for DeMar DeRozan should we fail to re-sign Paul George in free agency. So let's just start there, right? So DeRozan would only be a player that's in the mix if we lose Paul George. Now, the team that we most likely would lose Paul George to would be the Philadelphia 76ers. But in the recent days, there's been conversation from the Philadelphia 76ers rumors side of things that they're more focused on trying to trade for Jimmy Butler if the Miami Heat are willing to go a different direction. So a lot of that is dependent on what direction Miami's trying to go. Now, as far as the Clippers, we know that Paul George most likely is going to want to stay in Los Angeles. He requested a trade here. He re-signed here. He has said multiple times that he wants to be here. This is where his family's from. This is where he's from. He's from Palmdale, Palmdale P. He's got everything he wants here. The thing is, if the Clippers, which they clearly are unwilling to offer the max, they're not trying to offer more to Paul George than they gave Kawhi Leonard, which was a three-year deal along the ballpark of $50 million per year, If Paul wants more than that and Philadelphia is willing to offer it, then it's up to him. If he's willing to take that and the Clippers let Paul George walk for free, he declines that player option for next year and just bolts and signs a max deal with Philly or a really big deal with Philly, then it's like, okay, where where do the Clippers got to look to replace him? DeMar DeRozan is a guy who can fill it up points-wise to replace him. But the thing is the basketball fit is a little different with DeMar DeRozan. Now, before we talk about DeMar DeRozan's basketball fit with the Clippers instead of Paul George, potentially, we got to look at his situation. He is an unrestricted free agent. So if they do, if Paul George does walk, then there's a chance the Clippers can go for him. Now, he was just making $28 million per year. I would hope that he's going to make less than that. In terms of DeMar DeRozan, he's 34 years old, but he still was playing at a fairly high level. So he's going to probably want some money. Now, I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit less than that. So let's say $25 million for three years. So $75 million per year. 
that wouldn't be bad at all. Might give us a little bit more flexibility than re-signing Paul George to a big deal that he's going to want. DeMar DeRozan this past season actually averaged more points than Paul George, 24 a game, but he was the number one option on his team scoring-wise, whereas Paul George is number two. And DeMar DeRozan, I don't have the stats in front of me, but he's either first and second when it comes to time on the ball, you know, time with the ball in his hands for the Chicago Bulls. Paul George is third in that regard. Might even be fourth. I'd have to look that up. I think he's third. I doubt Russell Westbrook actually had the ball in his hands more than Paul this year, but... DeRozan, you know, he shot 48%. He did only shoot 33% from three. And that's the whole thing with DeMar, right? He's a 34-year-old, so he's a year older than Paul George. Next year, he's going to be 35. Right, He's turning 35 in August. So he's going to be 35 entering next season and for the duration of next season. So that would mean we'd have James Harden, who's going to be 35, DeMar DeRozan is going to be 35, and then Kawhi Leonard, 33. And the thing about DeRozan is this. Off the ball, he's nowhere near the threat of Paul George. For one, he's not the same level of floor spacer and shooter from three. He's a better mid-range shooter, and he embraces that mid-range. But we already have a mid-range sniper in Kawhi Leonard. It kind of feels a little bit redundant to have DeMar DeRozan. And the only off-ball action that he really comes off is curls you know, at the elbow, kind of like Rip Hamilton used to catch the ball around there. And I don't, I don't think he works very quickly off the catch like Paul George. He kind of turns and faces. I mean, sometimes he'll catch it and go and get into his mid-range. But Paul George, I think, is a little bit more versatility when he catches the ball, which ways he can go and you know, the, the amount of moves that he pulls off. Now, sometimes that, the amount of moves that Paul George has in his toolbox can be to his detriment where he doesn't simplify his game. But if we're talking about DeMar DeRozan and Paul George, Paul George is a much more useful spacer. You can use him in more creative ways off the ball and movement and get the defense to react in different ways. I mean, DeRozan is the type of guy that they leave open for three. They'll go under the screen with him when he's on the ball. But the one thing I will say about DeMar is he more consistently gets the most out of himself. I think he leaves you with less to be desired, and that's because he has that go-to mid-range where I always criticize Paul George Where's his, what's his go-to move? What's his bread and butter when things aren't falling for him? For DeMar, it's the mid-range. The thing about the DeMar is in the playoffs, and if we're still trying to win a championship, in the playoffs, DeRozan is even worse than Paul George, whether it be a number one or a number two. To be fair to DeRozan, though, he has not really been a number two scorer on any team that he's played for. He's always been the number one. Zach Levine was kind of supposed to take that mantle away from him, but we saw in 2022 that DeRozan was still... A very good player and he was in the MVP race in the first half of the season so that's the argument if you're pro to Rosen over Paul George however Paul George even though he's not as good of a defender as he's advertised better defender than DeMar DeRozan I think the off ball utility because the thing is Harden and Kawhi are still gonna have the ball in their hands the most assuming we re-sign James Harden and DeRozan is not the same spacer that Paul George is for James Harden and Kawhi so I don't think that makes us any better. I think it makes us worse. I like DeRozan in the sense that I think he'll more often than not give you what you expect. But in the playoffs, I mean, the guy's an even bigger dropper than Paul George. So that's a no for me, dog. And he's older. I love DeMar DeRozan. He's one of my favorite college players of all time. He's one of LA's very own, one of the best hoopers we've ever produced. Compton, USC. Unfortunately, I would not want him on the Clippers over Paul George. If it comes to that, I'd rather have Paul. But coming up, what about DeRozan's running mate in Toronto, Kyle Lowry? Some talk about him potentially coming over. Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. All you got to do is pick more or less on two or more players' stats and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the NBA Finals. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And now the WBA season is in full effect. You can bet or you can make entries on Caitlin Clark or Cameron Brink if you're a Sparks fan. You got to always take the more on the blocks with Cam. But download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's download the app today, the PrizePix app, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. 
Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, back talking about the Clippers and the players that have been rumored uh, with them in the last couple of days, I should say. Now, the Stein line, Mark Stein, reports that the Clippers are potentially interested in Kyle Lowry. Now, Kyle Lowry obviously played with Kawhi Leonard in Toronto and won a championship with him and recently was playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, if you watch the playoffs, you noticed that he was starting for them. And if I'm being real, I think he did his job, but, I mean, did he? He averaged 7 points on 34% shooting and 33% from 3. Yes, Kyle Lowry will give you some good passes. Yes, he will raise the collective basketball IQ of your team. Yes, he's going to always play hard. But he's old. He's 37 years old. And we're talking about we need to get younger. You're talking about Kyle Lowry. What is going on? He's going to be 39 in March. I think he could be a good piece off the bench for a team, but not a team that's so old already. What is going on? Why are we? Where are these rumors coming from? This is all, of course, this is all if Russell Westbrook doesn't come back because his status is still to be determined. He's got that $4 million player option and he must decide by June 29th, so less than a month, right? And we'll probably be making a couple of Russell Westbrook episodes leading up to that. But if Westbrook goes, there's no doubt in my mind that we need to just let Bones Highland have the keys. We need to get younger, need to add a little bit more pace. Kyle Lowry is 39 years old. But because he's friends with Kawhi because he won a championship with him, we want to do that. I mean, I don't get it. Last season, Kyle Lowry was sent from Miami to the Sixers. He played in 60 games overall. So that's not bad availability. And he averaged eight points a game. Go along with three rebounds and four assists. Now, again, this is all as a starter. He started 55 games out of 60 for both Miami and Philly. And let's just say this, Miami had an underwhelming regular season. He was starting. That's partially why. If Kyle Lowry is starting for you in 2024 at age 37, I don't know if that's something that you need to have, especially when he's like playing shooting guard, essentially. Like, let's see, he shot 43% this season, 39 from three. So he's still a good three-point shooter. But Kyle Lowry, I have no interest in bringing him along with the Clippers. I mean... He averaged seven points in the playoffs. And as I said, I listed his shooting splits. Look, he can take charges. He plays good D. He does have championship experience. But there's no way we need to get older. That is ludicrous. We need to let Bones Highland just go if if we're not going to bring Westbrook back. Because even though Westbrook's not necessarily young, he's still more athletic than like the, the entire team that we have. So I don't know where these rumors are coming from. I don't know where Mark Stein's getting it from, but Kyle Lowry is just, it's just insane. It's just really insane. He just finished his 18th season in the league. Like, we need Kyle Lowry on our team? It's it's wild. It's absolutely wild. Let me know what you think of that. I think it would be crazy. I mean, maybe, I think Kyle Lowry has like one more year left. In his career. Maybe maybe two if he wants to play till 40. I don't know what else he has left to prove. I'll just say this. If he has something left to prove, prove it somewhere else. We don't need more old players. We don't. As no disrespect to Kyle Lowry, he's had a hell of a career. The greatest Raptor of all time. I acknowledge it. Based on what he's done and what he means to that community. But there's no need for Kyle Lowry here in Los Angeles with the Clippers. And coming up, going to be talking about somebody else who we're very familiar with. Similar mold. But is there a feel-good story left for a certain Clipper legend? Going to be talking about that coming up. All right. So let's talk about the last name that I saw drawing interest reportedly in that same report by Mark Stein, Chris Paul. And here's the direct quote. 
The Clippers, I'm told, should be added to the list of teams that could emerge as a suitor for potential free agent Chris Paul. Caveats are immediately required in this situation since Paul might not even make it to free agency if the Warriors decide next month to keep him or trade him to a team that wants to keep him. I nonetheless heard this week that Paul and Kyle Lowry, whose free agency is looming after finishing last season in Philadelphia, are veteran guards set to interest the Clippers. That's, of course, assuming, again, if Russell Westbrook doesn't come back. Now, CP3, I mean, look, before we go into the rabbit hole there, let me just say this. Of course, Chris Paul wants, you know, another chance to win a championship, right? Or wants a chance to win a championship before he retires. And he knows at this point, after being a backup on a team that even make the playoffs with the Warriors, that he's going to be a backup wherever he goes. He's on his last legs, right? He's getting injured every year. He's got about a year or two left. This season, he missed 24 games. Last season, he missed 23 games. So, you know, this was the first season in, in his entire career that he averaged less than 10 points. It's also the first season of his entire career he averaged less than 30 minutes. So he kind of knows what he's getting himself into, in my opinion, wherever he goes. My issue with Chris is, and this is the first year he didn't make the playoffs since 2010. Oof. Here's the thing. If you look at the Golden State Warriors payroll, CP3, he's supposed to make $30 million next year, but the amounts not fully guaranteed but he's basically on contract for 30 million now if i'm the warriors i try to trade that expiring contract the question is are you as the clippers going to trade for chris paul what are you giving up bones highland or are you re-signing brandon boston and sending him there we should not send out young players for for chris paul and again I, as much as I love CP3, and it would be such a great feel-good story to have him back on the Clippers and maybe finish what he started and, and try to get a ring with us, it's just fairy tale stuff. I mean, he's injury-prone. He was back then. He is still now when we don't need that. That's exactly what we don't need. And he's old and slow. And it's going to slow down the pace. Like, it's exactly what we don't need. I love CP3. I would like him as a vet on a younger team or a contender that had a little bit more youth, but... Adding Chris Paul to this team? Are you crazy? Why are the... I don't know. Again, these these rumors shocked me, but it was worth an episode because it's you know it's the news right now. It's it's slow right now out there. The season's still going on, and the Clippers are you know their their season ended a while ago. So when I see rumors with DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, and Chris Paul linked to the Clippers, got to talk about it. You know everything and anything right here on Locked On Clippers. But I love CP3. Arguably the greatest Clipper of all time. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's abs there's just no need for another older, slower player. If these are the options for backup point guard, we got to play Bones. If you're so not confident in Bones Highland and what he can be as a basketball player in this league, trade him for some size. Like, I'm just very tired of the in, the in between. You know, I want to prioritize the future because I'm out on the 2-1-3 era and thinking that they're going to win a championship. I think it would take a miracle, a miracle of the highest degree, and I don't believe in all that. You need to keep the young guys, in my opinion. But if you want to really go all in, then yeah, trade them all. Go all in in this era and, and, and take away even more of the future that you already have so little of. Go for it. I think that we should not give up young players for old anymore. At all. But yeah, CP3, I mean, we can look at the stats this year. As I said, nine points, seven assists, four rebounds. I mean, look, I think he still did well in his role with Golden State took care of the ball, got some good shots in that second unit. And he still is great in the pick and roll, and he still has that mid-range going to his right that was, you know, made him so much money and, and was so lethal for so long. But we need we need athletes, man. We need athletes here with the Clippers and CP3, Kyle Lowry. They are not that. Now, the last bit of business that was a rumor with the Clippers was that they're prepared to offer Big Zoo a new contract, which he is thoroughly deserving of. And if anybody's earned his money with the Clippers, it is Zubots. He's on the last year of his contract next year, 11 million. And if we're being real in today's market, he deserves probably 20 million per year 
in today's market, if Norman Powell's getting 19, Zoo probably, is, especially in his, he's going into his prime, he's 27 years old, probably deserves like 22, 23 million per year, right? That's my opinion. I know a lot of people, you know, Zoo is such a controversial topic. Everybody has their opinions on Zoo, but, you know, that's what I think. Like, let me see how much, for example, Clint Capella's making. Because Clint Capella is nowhere near Zubats anymore. I watch the Hawks games. He is not anywhere near it. Let's take a look. Clint Capella, this past year, was making $22 million. He's, he's supposed to be making $22 million next year. So if that's the case, Zubats should really be making like $25 million next year. But then how much does that, like, what does that do for our cap situation? I don't know. We're financially strapped. That's something that we're just going to have to come to terms with. We're financially strapped, and we're not going to have that much flexibility. There's no point of even talking about things until we, you know, there there's smoke that we're putting certain guys on the table. And again, if like Zubots, you want to extend him, absolutely. He's a good, he's a great center to have for this team. If you want to contend next year and be in a win now mode, then yeah, definitely keep Zoo. But if you want to, if you do want to build for the future, Zoo would be somebody that will be able to get you something because teams will, could definitely use Zoo. But let me see, what does Miles Turner make? Because Miles Turner put his name up in lights in this postseason. He was really great. He's making wow, nineteen million. That's not enough. Man, the fact that Clint Capella is making more than Miles Turner is crazy. So maybe maybe Miles Zubats is along the ballpark of twenty million. But who knows? Maybe Miles Turner is just underpaid. I'm just looking at these centers for reference. But yeah, those are all the rumors as of now with player acquisition stuff. The moral of the story is this. Russell Westbrook has till June 29th to make that decision. And then Paul George is the one we have to watch. He's the one that this entire offseason, as Lon Murray said when he came on the show, is going to come down to. Paul George. What decision is he going to make? Does he want to stay with the Clippers? Does it matter if he gets the max? We shall see. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where I'm going live after every single playoff game and finals game. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Let me know what you think of the names that I listed. And also, episodes coming up, rapid fire. And I'm going to probably be going in depth a little bit more about the James Harden trade and how it's been ever since then. Russell Westbrook situation. I've done plenty of episodes on Kawhi and Paul George at this point. So I think it's time to talk about the rest of the roster a little bit more. How we can get guys or what kind of players we might need. And then hopefully get some guests on the show this summer. You know, try to collaborate with other Clipper content creators, fans, people that can offer insight. I will be doing my best to do that. And with this, when the NBA season ends, that'll be when I can really go out and try to be like, okay, let me go get these guests because then I won't be doing much for my normal, for my regular channel or my personal channel. So I'll be doing my best. I'll be doing my best. I really appreciate everybody that continues to listen, even in the off season. You know, we all love the Clippers so much. They they really cause us a lot of pain. But no matter what, year in year out, we stay supporting the boys, and that is why we are the most loyal fans in the league. And why I pray to God that we get to experience something as special as at least what the Mavericks are experiencing right now, making it to the NBA Finals. So, yeah, that episode, I'll probably do an episode on that. What the Dallas Mavericks making the NBA Finals does for the Clippers, or should I wait for them to maybe win the championship? Because if they win the championship, then the Clippers are going to be like, oh, that'll probably change the discussion. But, yeah, that'll be my uh, idea. I'm going to probably hold off on that till after the Finals ends. But as far as episode ideas, keep throwing them out there with uh, for me. We should probably do a mailbag soon. Keep throwing out the episode ideas in the offseason. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.